everybody that is watching me tonight will will need to get this message clearly rights privileges and responsibilities now as for the rights you are going to stand and you see miracles the move of god in this end time is going to be an amazement it is not just going to be preaching of God's word. It's going to be back with miracle signs and wonders. You are going to see the body of Christ as a very strong entity and a very strong force in this particular, you know, uh, end time, especially when, you know, this whole thing is over. Luke chapter 13, verse 7 to 9. Luke chapter 7, verse number 13. Uh, sorry, verse number 7 to 9. The Bible, you know, begins by saying, Luke chapter 13, verse 7. Wherefore neither thought I myself worthy unto thee, but I say a word to my servant shall be healed. And then he goes uh, further. You know, I got Luke 7, 13 rather. Luke chapter 13, verse number 7. Maybe let me, for the sake of understanding, let me uh, go further and read from verse number 6. And he speak also this parable, a certain man had a, planted a fig tree in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit thereon. And the Bible went further and said, and found none. And he said unto the dresser of the vineyard, behold, these three years I come seeking fruit and find none. Cut it down. Why cumber it ye the ground? And he answered and said to the Lord, let it alone this year also till I dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, then thou shalt cut it down. And this is two years ago. The grace of God gave us an opportunity for us to share something very profound. And I am going to use the opportunity to read you what we uh, read last 31st night. You know, very, very awesome revelation. We have been reading it for some time now and it's Matthew chapter 3 verse number 10 very similar to what we just read 3 verse number 10 Matthew the third chapter the third verse share the page if you have just joined me it will be of a profound uh, pleasure you know for you to do that the Bible said now also the axe is laid upon the root of the trees therefore every every I look at this and I look at it with extreme caution Extreme, extreme caution. Look at it very well. He said, Every tree which bringeth not fruit, bringeth not good fruit, shall be hewn down. Very profound. Every tree that bringeth not good fruit shall be hewn down and cast into the fire. Now, I am going to link this profound truths to few things whilst we have you in my space and let's, you know, uh, talk about some very uh, wonderful concepts and the grace of God will be a portion. First thing I want you to, you know, do, uh, get a pen and a paper. And let's write a few things down uh, and the Lord's mercies and grace will help us. Get a pen and a paper and let us work. It will be of a tremendous blessing. Uh, like never before get a pen and a paper first of all uh, I want you to know that this is the end time I want you to know emphatically clear that particular you know uh, concept this is the end time whether you believe it or not that's not the point the point is I'm telling you something that is profound I'm telling you something that we are in when I compared this pandemic in which we are to what's going on all around the world, I come to um, a conclusion that now everybody wants to know um, what is going on here. 
and how when is it going to end and how is it you know and so on and so on, those questions like that you know and so when world health organization conducts their press conference everybody want to know what is happening when governors in the united states of america conduct their press conferences people or their press briefing people want to hear when presidents including my president conducts these uh press briefings people want to hear and they want to know you know exactly what goes on and so on and so forth the reason is because we're living in critical moments we have defined it, you know, in so many ways. These are not ordinary times. These are not, you know, normal times. These are not, and so on and so forth. Um, but that is not my message. My message is that God has his intention concerning um, his people and concerning the kingdom and concerning um, how it's going to end. Because he knows the thoughts that he thinks of, our thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us a good end or unexpected end. Thoughts of good and not uh, of evil. Having uh, said that to you, I would like everybody also to know emphatically clear that the end time is a very critical uh, time that, you know, we all live in. Matthew chapter 25 says, He will gather the nations before him and then he will separate the goods from the sheep. Even among the nations, he is going to see sheep nations and goats nations. There is no two ways about that. Now, when I think about that, it really amazes me. Um, the second thing that I want you to write after this is the end time is that um, God is going to judge through the Christ. We have emphatically made it clear. Uh, John chapter 5 verse number 22 downwards that the father will judge no man he has entrusted all judgment to you know the father and and so on to the son and so on that all shall honor the son the scriptures go further to talk about that anybody the son you know will justify it. it's going to be just and so in Romans chapter 2 verse number 16 the bible talks about you know, the day where, you know, Christ will judge uh, every man according to his words or every man's deeds. This is the moment where everybody will have to make it right with God. There's no two ways about that. So that is the third thing I would like you to write down. He is going to uh, come not as a, as, as a lamb again, but as a judge. And if it is going to come as a judge, then we are going to be able to put ourselves together and understand certain quarters of scriptures and uh, the moments in which we are so that we can be able to stand before him worthy. The last thing that I'm going to tell you that we can take off um, is that we shall all appear one after the other. Romans chapter 14 verse 12. Nobody is going to stand before the Lord as a team. Now, when you look at this 19, we all will have to understand a few things. Um, we are not making a diagnosis, you know, the source of the um, pandemic. That's not the point. Jesus have already told us there are going to be pandemics. And not only in Matthew chapter 24, verse number number seven but he even goes further to talk about in matthew chapter 24 he was making you know since the beginning of creation there is going to come uh difficult times as which has never you know come when you read from matthew chapter 24 verse number 20 uh he makes uh something very emphatically clear uh, that is very pertinent to everybody that is watching. We need to be able to understand, you know, the course of that particular scripture. And I'm going to read it to you. Matthew, the 24th chapter and uh, the 28th verse. Matthew 24, verse number 20 downwards. The Bible said, uh, And pray that your flight is not in winter, neither is it in sub sub on the Sabbath day. Um, for then shall... Then 
for then shall be a great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no and uh nor shall there ever be and so if you read verse number 21 or say now and no now we hear kasia if you are seeing for us here he being see that now he being so matter a paper and so uh when we compare what i'm talking about to uh the economies of the world and uh the things that uh are going on around the world uh when we consider um the I mean, third world countries, countries that we never thought were going to, you know, be in the situations that they find themselves in right now. And so I'm going to use up whilst you are preparing to go to sleep. Give me just about 10 more minutes of your time and let us uh, talk about some very few things that I believe will be of a tremendous essence to every child of God that is listening to me. Now, we are not only looking at signs because now the signs have become very vivid to us. That crisis coming is by the door. We have come to that understanding already. Now, what we will want everybody to be understanding, and uh, now there is an assignment on the modern day believer. There is an assignment on every Christian. We are not just going to sit down and fold our hands and, and see things unfolding. The assignment of your life is not the, it, the one that anybody can joke with. It is very crucial, it's very critical, it is very astute, and it's very prophetical. I'm serious about this. Don't joke with this. Christ is requiring that every Christian put on your full armor. It's time for battle. This is the time that the gospel must be projected vociferously. And when I say the gospel, we are not going to mix up the message. Before COVID-19, a lot of people talk nonsense in the name of gospel. Now, one of the things that uh, COVID-19 has taught all of us are lessons. We need to quickly align ourselves with the Lamb of God, Christ Jesus' majesty. Very quickly. So that when we are preaching, we know what we are preaching. We are not just talking nonsense and just sounding empty air. We are bringing the gospel there. Because every time I tell you that the quality of the word determines the quality of your life. I want you to know that. The quality, you know, determines. I said, you know, uh, when the pandemic started, I said that um, if... All the things that came into the work of God and came into um, the church. Name of, you know, I've got this, it can heal that. I've got oil, I've got water, I've got whatever, whatever, and all that. I said that, you know, if you believe that they work accurately, these are a lot of people, you know, who are dying from all around the world. Bring those madness out and, you know, let's cure it. If your rubbish cannot cure anything, then, you know, in as much as we know, then all those tokens have failed. Then we need to return back to default settings and make sure that we are getting the correct message, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The king is coming again and this thing must be preached accurately. We are not just going to be talking nonsense all over, around the place. The, the preaching of the cross, the message of the cross, or the preaching of the cross of Jesus Christ is going to be something that nobody jokes with. And so if we are not going to joke with the gospel of Christ, then uh, we are all going to come to the cognizant understanding that the moment we open our mouths, the message must be clear. We need clarity. In the preaching of the gospel. I believe very clearly that we have, we brought a lot of excesses into uh, what we call the prosperity preaching or world health and prosperity preaching. Uh, we took it too far that we made the soul confused. So when you talk about uh, preaching the when, when salvation, it is a package. 
When you read Hebrews chapter number 6, verse number 9, the Bible says something very profound. I will uh, read it to you. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 9. If you have a Bible, let us work on those lines and so that the grace of God will be our portion. Hebrews 6, 9. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 9. The Bible said, But beloved, we are persuaded of better things and things that accompany salvation. In other words, when somebody is saved, there are things that come as an accompanied or uh, uh, unaccompanied. There are salvation once it's been opened, it comes as a package. You know, everybody who is saved, washed in the blood of Jesus, uh, saved in Christ, they receive a package. When you look carefully at the book of Romans, which is the entreaties of Paul's gospel, or the gospel that Paul preached, his version of the gospel, you realize that it began with condemnation, then justification, then sanctification, then, you know, regeneration uh, and propitiation, and then, and then he, he went further to uh, glorification. Uh, so you realize that when we say salvation, it, it, it comes in as a package. You have the aspect of redemption when you have been redeemed from the domain of darkness into the, the light of God or into the marvelous light of his dear son. And then you come to understand that as a son of God or as a child of God, you have rights uh, and so on and so forth and privileges. But you also have responsibilities. You do not only have rights and privileges, rights like in the name of Jesus, you use the authority of Christ Jesus that is there, you know, uh, and we that were not sons or we that were not children are now translated into the children of the living God. These are the privileges that goes with it. We stand in the name of Jesus and command elements and they adhere to, you know, the devil, you know, uh, obeys the authority of the name of Jesus uh, when we declare it. The Bible said, and uh, you know, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils and if they drink any deadly thing, it, it will by no means hurt them. Having said that, I will also kindly would like to put it this way. He said, the works that I do, you shall do and greater works than these shall you also do. So if these things have been outlined very clearly to the modern day Christian and to the child of God, then we bring you to your responsibilities. Your privileges and your rights are outlined, but your responsibilities are also the thing that comes up in Matthew chapter 28 verse number 19 downwards. You know, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. So you see the preaching of the gospel comes into the picture one more time. That is exactly what Peter did. That's what exactly Peter did. We are not going to leave this thing to the pulpiteers. We are not going to leave this thing to the altar workers. I, this is where my message is centered. Nobody can sit on the fence and say, you know, this belongs to the preachers. No. Too many people are perishing. I'm bringing the message to his quarters. Too many people are perishing. Including even people in government, in politics, and all stuff like that. And we cannot sit down and, and leave it to just people. The Lord gave me a message to come and talk to you. Your responsibilities. So if your pen is still there, every child of God, number one, have rights. Number two, has privileges. And then number three, has responsibilities. So I want to talk to you about rights privileges and responsibilities this is the mind of god i mean this is the mind of god whilst we are in hibernation whilst we are in alignation so that when we bounce back oh church is going to come back big time i'm telling you church is going to come back you know vehemently bluntly. church is going to come back you know if the enemy thinks that this is an attack on the church he must be joking because, you know, the eagle, once, you know, it alienates itself, the eagle goes to, you know, plot its wings and feathers uh, and, 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 you know, rejuvenate. 
That is what the church is going through right now. If the enemy thinks that it, it is for evil, then God has it for good. See, that's what I'm talking about. The mind of God versus COVID-19. Whilst we are in there, I'm telling you, God is raising a different breed of people that are going to come and you are going to see a new church. You are going to see a, a new breed. This breed is an invigorated breed of people. I want to talk to you. Share the page. Rights, privileges, and responsibilities. Rights, privileges, and responsibilities. So all our people who are in villages and all that kind of thing, who are going through very obscure scarcity and, and times of difficult moments and all that kind of thing, uh, relax because it is part of your preparation and be at peace and be let your hopes go very high because the grace of God and the love of God is going to bring you up and going to show you extreme victory like never before. Relax. I'm telling you the truth of God's word. Everybody that is watching me tonight will, will need to get this message clearly. Rights, privileges, and responsibilities. Now, as for the rights, you are going to stand and see miracles. The move of God in this end time is going to be an amazement. It is not just going to be preaching of God's word. It's going to be back with miracles, signs, and wonders. You are going to see the body of Christ as a very strong entity and a very strong force in this particular, you know, uh, end time. Especially when, you know, this whole thing is over. It will really amaze you. It will really, really amaze you. Share the page if you are here. I will let you know that the church will come up more stronger, more uh, bolder more courageous, more loving. We are going to come in a synergistic uh, uh, entity. We are going to be a united front. We are going to be a focused, you know, uh, organism. And we are going to really represent the Lord in terms of, uh, in terms of being, um, being ambassadors of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so, Everybody that is watching will have to understand that particular. It is an army. It is an army. God's church is going to be used by God as an army. Seriously speaking. And then our privileges. We will never lack anything. The church is going to be very wealthy. Last time when I was speaking to you, I was speaking to you on those lines. Very wealthy. You are going to see a very rich church. Very wealthy church. Seriously going to see a very wealthy church. I'm telling you something. But allow me to talk to you about our responsibilities tonight. To you about our responsibilities tonight. We have a duty to be able to master and to be sculpted in this thing. It is your responsibility. Steady to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You need to study the word of God. First responsibility. Because in, in the Bible said, you know, the words that I've spoken to you, you know, it has washed you or you have been washed in the word. Once you are sculpted in the state, you, will, you are going to understand a lot of things. And those things that you will understand will build you up. It will shape you. It will build you. You know, when I look at the filth, before COVID-19 and even beyond, the church finds itself in it's so amazing. When I look at the level uh, of sin, the house of God is so amazing. I'm seeing Matthew chapter 24 verse number 15. When you see the abomination of that makes desolate in the holy place, he that readeth, let him understand. That's where we are. We have corrupted the covenant of Levi. Malachi chapter number uh, 
chapter 2, verse number 7, 8, and 9. Is there. We have corrupted the holy things. So our first ability after we have realigned is study the word of the Lord. We need to study and master God's word. Not the ability to only preach it. No. The ability to leave it. Because oftentimes we don't even have to shout or yell or even say anything. Oftentimes we just have to, people will have to just look at our lives and repent. I'm telling you the truth. When I look at the level of sins the Christians, the Christians get themselves into, Charlie, I know what day. The fear of God is no more. We don't fear God. We don't tremble at his word. The reason is because we are not sculpting in the word of the Lord. We don't even know the word. When I look at the quality of the past generation to this one, I realize that we have fallen from grace. I'm telling you the truth. The word. If we can be addicts of the word of God like we are addicts of our gadgets, can you imagine what is going to happen? I'm telling you. And so it is very interesting when I, you know, uh, go through some of the sphere and the things that, you know, the, the, the church is bleeding. Church is bleeding. Just like, you know, the nation is sick. Now it's not only uh, this country that is sick, it's also, you know, the whole world is sick. My country has been sick for a long time. Now the exposure of that sickness, I'm not talking about COVID-19. We are sick and the sickness is called sin. Yeah. Sickness is called sin. And it's so sad. Let the church wake up to the light of the gospel. To the light of the... This is the time for us to, you know, to be serious and astute students of God's word. Then the Holy Spirit will bring the impartation of that end time anointing that we all need to be able to stand for the Lord. I'm telling you the word of God. Share the page for me. Ten more minutes. So rights, privileges, responsibilities. Your first responsibility, be sculpted in the word of God. Steady to show that it's approved unto God, not to men. Your standard is to God. Steady to show thyself approved unto God. You know, in this uh, uh, pandemic and everything, I, I realize that we are not even seeing the opportunity that God has given us. Bringing us from all the things that took off our attention and is trying to bring us back to life. And still, we don't see it. Once you have a lot of time in lockdown, this is the time to seek God and seek his word. Dear, dear, this is the time to seek God and seek his word. Rights, privileges, responsibilities. First responsibility, be sculpted in the word of God. Number two, be rooted in the presence of God. I mean, Libra, Coron, Nespra, Gelegre, No, Kra, Hapskra, two hours, three hours, four hours, Magra, No, Skere, Bla, Kle, Kla, Vru, Kle, Nes, Kla, Bla, No, Skere. Then an anointing is being leached on you. You can never tell me you carry anointing and live in sin. Never. This is where, you know, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 comes in, verse 1. 
Ecclesiastes. Let me read that to you. Chapter 10. And verse number 1. The Bible said, Death flies, causes the ointment or oil of apothecary to stink or to send forth a stinking savor or scent. Yeah. If you are not rooted in the presence of the Lord, <laughs> how can you be anointed? How can you carry the anointing of the Holy Spirit? I'm talking to somebody tonight. Can you share the page? Let's work. Sinning now is normal and common. Thought about it, I can understand. Married men sleeping with married women who are not their spouses. This is not normal. It can never be normal. People that are supposed to stand in offices of trust and be representatives of Almighty God, how come they can lower the standards like that? I don't get it. I don't get it. I do not get it. As for the world, when I get opportunity on radio and television, I do not speak to, I, 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 I address the lost. The lost. People that are blinded by the devil and the God of this world. We don't joke to bring them into the fold of Christ vehemently to snatch them from the grip of the devil. We don't joke with that. I want you to get that revelation very clear, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very serious stuff that I'm talking about. Share the page. Let's work. Serious people that I honor, respect, and love. How can you make, how can you make, you know, certain great mistakes? You know, I think about it, you know, it really amazes me and really shocks me. So I'm going to use the opportunity to speak to everybody who is watching me right now. The mind of God and COVID-19, it is clear. It is clear. And this is the clarity. Rights, privileges, responsibilities. The Lord is getting the attention of his church. The Lord is not only getting the attention of his church, of nations, of presidents, of because the nations are in two categories. Matthew 25, verse number 32. The nations are goats and sheep. Goat nations, sheep nations. It's very clear. I'm not saying that. You can read from the word of the Lord. The Bible said he will gather all the nations when he comes in his glory. That all the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate the nations as a shepherd separate the goats away from the sheep. And he will say to the sheep, come into the rest of your, your, your God or your father. And say to the goats, and ponche, ponche, ponche. I wish I can talk to you about them punching. A punch is so a problem. A punch so a power problem. I'm telling you the word of God. If our MP, our appointees, our minister, and our suffer, and our appointees, brother, sister, I am not joking. So then, your first responsibility to be sculpted in the word of the Lord. Your second responsibility is to be grounded and rooted in the presence of the Lord. Your third responsibility, because once you, secondly, once you are rooted in the presence of God, you are anointed, you are deeply spiritual, you carry fire. Of the Holy Spirit. End time fire. Pentecost fire. Carry that flow. After COVID. 
you will see a very, very vibrant church. The church of Jesus Christ will rise like a serious army. It will amaze you. You know what the Lord is doing right now? Refinement, 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 polishing, polishing, polishing you and I to present us in an amazing furnace. I'm telling you the word of the Lord. And then lastly, number three, this, watch this particular one, don't miss it. Number three, share the word. You don't need to be a clerical holder. Share the word. Once you are sculpted in the word, rooted in the presence of the Lord, share the word. Are going to share the word. It's a very serious thing we are dealing with here. Go and share the word. Share the word. Share the word. Wherever you are in the flight. Now these days there are no flights. Share the word. You are, we are all incarcerated now. Share the word. When I say share the word, share Christ. Because Christ is the word. You can never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it's the power of God unto salvation. Romans chapter 1 verse number 16. Power of God unto salvation. You better hear what we are talking about. Everybody that is, you know, watching me right now. Your God, your King is coming. But He can just come, you know, when we are not doing what we are supposed to do. Share Christ. So many people don't know Him. Ladies and gentlemen, may we not miss that opportunity. Look at, look at the way it is so sad. The church is busily firing itself while souls are busily perishing. Look at the people that are dying in the United States of America right now. How many of them are going to return? How many of them are dying, you know, to go to heaven? We have a responsibility to preach the gospel. And the gospel does not, the preaching of the gospel does not only belong to me and to the preachers. The preaching of the gospel belongs to every child of God as a missionary Christian. He expects this from us. Now, let me end by telling you uh, your fourth responsibility. Your fourth responsibility, listen to this, is to have self-control and the fruit of the Spirit. The reason why I singled out self-control is because when we talk about self-control, the Holy Spirit helps you to be able to control yourself, your, your desires, yeah, and navigates your your course into holiness. My God, holiness. The subject the church don't talk about anymore. Holiness. It is now difficult to find virgins in the house of God. Very difficult. Because by the time they are, you know, 15, 16, they've already tasted sex without marriage. It's sad. And so we are bringing brides to the altar. And they don't carry that purity. So our quality, our quality is very frail. It's 12, you know, let me just allow you to go to sleep. self-control really amazes me you know because if I control my desire the Bible said uh, he that cannot control his emotions is like a city without walls yeah like a city without walls 
The Bible said without holiness, no man can see God. I don't care who you are. You can have a huge ministry if you are not a holy person, man of God, woman of God. I'm telling you, you are carrying all that huge ministry to hell. You better hear what we are talking about. And so it's time to control your emotions. Like your anger. Yeah. The devil has thrown his children out there provoking people. And if you lose your focus, you'll be following their madness and their trend. I'm talking to somebody here. Rights, privileges, responsibilities. It is your responsibility to walk in holiness and purity and righteousness and sanctity. Yeah. Yeah. The trumpet is sounding. You can't be sleeping. I keep sounding the trumpet. You cannot be sleeping. When I look at the, the, the use of, uh, you know, drugs, uh, the use of abusive language, the, you know, no respect for parents. When I look at, you know, the falling standards of even education, intellectual capacity is not even there. So the Lord so told me to come and warn you. He asked me to come and warn you. It is not a joke. It's very serious stuff. Our preaching will not only talk to you about Jesus Christ, it will also warn you and teach you in all wisdom. Colossians chapter 1 verse number 27. Warning you that your king is coming again. And he wants you to understand that you have rights and privileges and responsibility. That is the only reason why you'll be judged. To whom much is given, much is required. Yeah. So don't look at it that I'm, I'm speaking to somebody. I'm speaking to you. He asked me to come and talk to you. This is a serious stuff. We, we're not joking about this. He, he, he wants us to talk. This, this is not a joke. The devil is about a very dangerous agenda. He is gravitating towards an antichrist system. How many Christians are even knowledgeable about this? How many Christians are knowledgeable about the agenda of the enemy? My God, this is where we are. Wake up. Too much work to do. May the Lord help us and aid us so that we can be able to walk in holiness, righteousness, purity, sanctity. And it begins with self-control and the fruit of the Spirit. Self-control and the fruit of the Spirit. I'm serious about this. Please. Having said that to you, I will quickly, you know, let you understand. One of your responsibilities is to stand for the truth. One of your responsibilities, number four, is to stand for the truth. Too many lies all around us. Too much lies. Even in this pandemic, people want to use blood. My job is to sound out, warn you, and prepare you for the coming of the Lord. Any demonic thing, any filth that have entered into the work of the Lord and the house of God, my job is to kick it. Hear that well. 
As I finish up, I would like to, you know, ask you, is your oil contaminated? Is your oil drying up? Are you still a pleasure in God's presence? Do you still stand holy before God? What will the Lord say about you when he's judging you tonight or this morning? Reflect on these things. May the Lord help you. Amen.